How we doing everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Mass and Drum Whiskey Room. I am Jason C and if you're a subscriber, really glad you're here for this episode. Uh, if it's your first time here looking for the latest in whiskey and bourbon news and reviews, you have found the right channel. So think about hitting that subscribe button below and hit that bell notification so you know when I am putting out a new video. Today, uh, switching a little bit here from bourbon, going into a bottle that uh, a lot of my viewers have wanted me to try and get into. Uh, this is the Springbank. 10 year old single malt scotch, let's get into it. So Springbank was founded in 1828 when a smuggler named William Reed applied for a distilling license. Uh, Reed found life difficult on the right side of the law, however, and in 1837, the business was sold to John Mitchell, who, along with his son Alexander, accounts for the J&A Mitchell name that still appears on Springbank labeling today. So Springbank lies right in the heart of Campbelltown, a town once home to over 30 distilleries and once deemed whiskey capital of the world. Today, though, there are only three, which is Glen Scotia, Glen Gyle, and Springbank. Now, while Springbank is easily the most successful, it hasn't always really been smooth sailing for them. Uh, back in 1979, all production at the distillery ceased, and the future seemed a little bit uncertain at best until a new era dawned in 1987 under Headley Wright, a great-great-grandson of John Mitchell. Wright restarted production and halted any supply deals with blenders, choosing instead to focus entirely on the single malt brand. His strategy seems to have paid off with the uh, Springbank name now commanding fierce loyalty from devoted fans across the world. Now that fan devotion really stems from Springbank being distinctive for really one reason. It is one of the few whiskey makers in Scotland that still performs the entire production process from beginning to end on site starting with malting using its own floor maltings through distillation, barreling, and bottling using its private bottling plant. Springbank is truly a self-sufficient distillery. It would probably surprise most Scotch drinkers to learn how often barrels are stored and blended off-site, not to mention diluted and bottled. Now, the standard offerings from Springbank are typically lightly peated, but they also produce a heavily peated malt whiskey under the Long Row name, and peat-free malt whiskey under Hazelburn using Springbank's three stills in different combinations as well as adjusting the peat levels. Now that brings me to my first Springbank review. Uh, I thought I'd start with the common and popular Springbank 10-year-old. The 10-year-old is a mixture of both bourbon and sherry matured malt whiskey presented without added coloring or chill filtration and at a good proof point to allow the flavors to come through. Uh, Springbank is distilled two and a half times. By that, meaning that some of the new make has been distilled twice and some three times with long fermentations, which bring out even more flavor. All right, guys, so here's a close-up of the Springbank 10-year-old. Uh, I definitely have some whiskey friends that are fiercely loyal to Springbank and absolutely love this stuff. As you can see, I have sipped on it uh, right to get to the shoulder of the bottle and offer to really give a good review of this. Um, I've always, one thing I've learned with scotch that you never really judge it by just pouring it straight out of the neck into the glass and judging it there. Letting some air get, get into it really changes it for the better and can really provide a, uh, a more accurate review. So as I mentioned, this is bottled at 46% ABV with no color added and non-chill filtered, which is just awesome. Uh, this is a peated single malt scotch aged 60% in ex-bourbon and 40% in ex-sherry casks with a retail price of around 60 bucks. So let's crack this open. Squeaky pot. Nice natural color in the glass. All right, guys, I've been really excited to review this one for you. Uh, Springbank 10 definitely has some very loyal fans and were telling me that you have to try it, you have to review it, definitely get into it. So here it is, and I hope you guys enjoy the review. So, all right, guys, let's get into the color here. So as you can see, it's, it's really light, and that's expected. It's, there's no added coloring. Um, what you see is what you get with, uh, with Springbank, which is awesome. It's non-chill filtered, so it's really sticking to the glass well. It's got this really nice golden wheat color to it. Just a beautiful color on the whiskey. All right, let's go into the nose, guys. Here we go. I mean, you definitely get some, uh, some, some peat 
you know, a little bit of a peat on the nose, but it's not as heavy as you would think. I feel like it was much stronger when I first opened the bottle, but it's definitely gotten some air into it. And now there's some beautiful sweetness underneath that uh, the peat. It's actually probably taking over the peat a little bit more now is that beautiful sweetness. I mean, it's sweet, it's earthy, it's got this really beautiful, that, that honey, lemon, orange, marmalade flavor that I get on a really nice, beautiful scotch. I get a really beautiful apple note in here too that I love. There's a really nice apple, lemon flavor in here. There's definitely a, a, a salty brininess to it. But probably my favorite note that I got on the nose here, and I didn't get it either when I first opened it, but it's now, it's kind of... It, it's shown itself as I've sipped down on it. It's this really bright cinnamon pepper note. Oh, it's almost like a red hot candy. If you ever had a red hot candy, it's just great on the nose. Let me get in there here. Yeah, and even as you go deeper, it's it's just it's sweet. Uh, the smoke just kind of underlies the whole the whole nose experience. It's really nice. All right, let's get into my first uh, sip here for Spring Bike Ten. Cheers. All right, so first sip, definitely on the peatier side, but then it just turns into this mouth coating, honey, lemon. There's almost a, that, that barley cereal sweetness to it. Really, really nice on the palate. Let's go for the uh, second sip and see what we get here. Yeah, still really getting that beautiful light apple, um, that light apple flavor. The peat still is is underlying the sweetness that's in there. It's a it's just a beautiful kind of balance of uh, sweet and peat. Mm. I actually get a little bit of a of a caramel note in there too, probably from the from the ex bourbon casks. I feel like I'm getting more of a uh, of a bourbon influence than a sherry influence, but I do like that balance. The fruitiness comes through for me more in the sense of uh, citrus fruits, as you know, with those lemon, the orange. Mm, really good on the second sip. All right, let's go for a third sip. Here we go. Yeah, this is it's such a consistent uh, it's such a consistent scotch. It's the flavors really aren't changing too much. You're getting, like I said, that really nice hidden of sweetness up front, a little bit of peat. But then the sweetness really makes itself known. That lemon, the orange, the apple flavor, a hint of that caramel, really kind of hits that mid palate. And then my favorite part of this dram, and it's still sticking around, is that cinnamon black pepper uh, note. It's just, it's coating the entire, you know, my, my entire palate here. It's just sticking around. Um, that non chill filtering probably really helps that. And it's just sticking to the back of my palate, the sides, my cheeks. <laughs> it's just sitting in there and inviting you to have more. That's probably one of my favorite parts of this bottle is that really nice spiciness that sticks around. Let's go in for one last sip here. We'll talk about the finish. The finish on there. The finish on there just really gets to kind of smoky and salty. It's not too sweet like it is on the mid palate. I wish the I wish the finish had a little bit more sweetness to it, but that brininess, that saltiness, along with that smoke and the that smoky peaty flavor, and then you that little bit of cinnamon and black pepper that stick around right, on the palate. It really for a ten year old whiskey, this provides a lot of flavor. Uh, that non chill filtering, the proof point on this, it's a it's a beautiful bottle for uh, for a ten year old whiskey. All right, guys, so as a cool bonus, I have a sample here of the Springbank 12-year-old cast strength. Thanks to a good friend of the channel, Jason Coates. Thank you so much, buddy. This is uh, batch 17, also bottled with no chill filtration and no color added. This is a 12-year-old cast strength single malt aged in a combination of ex-bourbon and ex-sherry casks at around a 60 to 40 or 70 to 30 ratio, depending on the vatting. Now this is bottled at a whopping 56.2% ABV and retails for about 100 to 120 bucks. So let's get a pour of this. I'm really excited to try this one. So let's get a pour of that. All right, so I really wanted to see what the difference is. A lot of people swear by the cast strength, the 12 year old. Uh, I know there's, there's some differing opinions on better batches and better years, but uh, really lucky enough to get a pour of this. So I really wanna see uh, how I fare at this one. So here we go.
All right, so on the nose, this one is this one is way less smoky to me on the nose than, than this one was. I'm not getting a big punch of peat at all. It's very sweet, very fruity. A lot of, uh, of peach notes on here I'm getting. Very small hint of, a, of smokiness. Not a lot there. But there's this... Uh, I, I, I know maybe maybe that's what the spring bank funk uh, would when people say that what it is it's kind of like this mineral salty quality to it very very unique I've never smelled anything like it I mean there's still that pepper some herbal quality to it I'm even getting a little hint of a uh, chocolate on the nose too that's really interesting such a crazy mix of uh, of scents that I'm picking up on the nose here. Yeah, and all that, all the smoke that I was getting here, that peatiness is just really kind of taking a back seat. Really interesting. But yeah, that that kind of mineral, chemical type, I mean, maybe that's that rubber tire note that I'm getting on there. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So let's try it on the palate, see what we get here. Cheers. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that did... Okay, there's the smoke, there's the peat, but there's a whole another a bunch of flavors here weaved in. Wow, that chocolate note is translating to the palate. Wow, toffee, honey, definitely some more honey, but it's darker, it's deeper, it's richer. Even a little bit of vanilla in there too. Mmm, really good on the first sip. That's that's very intriguing dram. Let's go for a second sip here. Cheers. Yeah, a little bit. All right, so now, now we're starting to get a little bit more of the uh, that peachy flavor, some of the lemon, a little bit of that that orange, the honey is coming back. But it, now it's 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 more like barbecue uh, barbecue fruits. They're they're darker, they're richer. Those those caramelized sugars are coming out a little bit more. Mm. Yeah, that that burnt toast, orange marmalade, lemon peel type aspect you're getting. Um, is absolutely delicious. I really like the proof point on it. The finish is pretty medium to long. Really kind of feeling it. I like this a lot. All right, let me go for another one last sip here. Cheers. Uh, you know what I really like about the, oh, on the finish? The finish is a little drying, I think, because of the alcohol. Definitely dries you out a little bit, but the one thing I'm getting on this that I wasn't getting on this was this, this nutty quality to it, this nutty, this nuttiness. I don't know if that's really an almond or a hazelnut or there's something there that that has a really nice sweet roasted maybe it's a roasted honey nut flavor. That's really good. This this kind of definitely has a deeper richer flavor profile than this. Well, I think it's to be expected between the proof an extra 2 years. Mm. Really beautiful whiskey. What can I say? I really I really like both of these Springbanks. All right, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to add a little bit of water to the cast strength and see if it uh, opens up any more flavors here. So just a couple drops. All right, on the nose, let's see. Wow, it made it way sweeter on the nose as expected. That, that really nice chocolate, almost nutty note that I was getting is kind of gone now. But I'm still getting those the, that peach note, the, the orange, the, the citrus. Mm. Still getting that weird mineral chemical type note that's in there. But, you know, you expect it to translate to the palate. It's really not at all. All right, I'm going for a quick sip here. Cheers. Oh, that's really good with the water, too. The water made the, made the notes brighter. There's more, there's more, uh, it's more, of a, it's a brighter orange flavor, brighter lemon flavor. That nutty characteristic that I was having trouble maybe picking out. I think it's coming through as a little bit more of an almond. Mmm. Mmm, honey-coated almonds. I think that's really the note I'm getting there. I'm going for one more sip. Mmm, yeah. But there, <laughs> there is definitely more of a mineralistic, salty, chemical-type vibe that I'm getting on this one that I wasn't getting on the 10. I don't know. Do I like that part of it? I don't think I mind it because of how rich the flavors are in here. It's it's really good. Um, I really like the proof on this. I love the deep, rich flavors on it. But that one note, that mineralistic type salty note, is something I've never had on a scotch before, and I'm glad I got to try this with you guys. So uh, 
both of them are just awesome. Me being primarily a bourbon drinker, I'm finding out that scotches aged in a mix of both bourbon and sherry are the scotches I'm favoring. Uh, most exclusively aged sherry scotches are on the sweeter side for me, and exclusively aged ex-bourbon uh, single malt scotches, although easy to sip on, uh, just doesn't really provide kind of the depth I'm looking for. But when you combine the ex-bourbon and the ex-sherry, and some peat as well, scotches like these, uh, like the Springbanks for me, are providing a really beautiful complexity, more challenging experiences uh, as I taste and explore different scotches from different regions uh, and get better at picking out some of the flavors. But for me, Springbank definitely has another fan. All right, guys. Well, thanks again for watching the Master Drum Whiskey Room. I hope you enjoyed this episode for Springbank 10 with a cool cameo by Springbank 12 Cast Strength. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you haven't yet, please hit the subscribe button below. Please hit that like button. If you haven't yet, please find me on Instagram, and you can also find me on Twitter. Let me know what you think of Springbank, if you've had these two drams, what your experience with them has been. And as I always say, it is not about the whiskey, it is the people you share it with. So cheers, and I'm going to have some more Springbank. Take care, everybody.